Guys, thank you, most welcome. I want us to continue with our series this evening. Our main series is End Times, but specifically today we are dealing on the subject of the 144,000. 144,000 is our subject this evening. And then I want us to go to the scripture in the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 to 4. Please let's get there. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 to 4. We can read together. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing to the land or on the sea or on the tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east having the seal of the living God he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea verse 3 do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the four heads, heads of the servants of our God verse 4 then I had the number of those who were sealed 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. That is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day as we hear your word. We pray for clarity and revelation and impartation and understanding. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to remind you where we started this series, the end time series, and I said the outline scripture, the outline scripture that gives us the outline of the book of Revelation is Revelation chapter 1 verse 19. This is just a recap of the long journey we've been walking through the book of Revelation and end times. Of course the book of Revelation is the key book. Daniel and Revelation are the key books of end times. So I just want to give you a recap so that if you've just joined us recently or today you can at least get to understand where we are. Our subject has been on end times and of course our key book has been the book of Revelation. And the key text that gives us an outline of the book of Revelation is Revelation chapter 1 verse 19 which says, Write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place after. And I said when we started, this gives us the structure of the book of Revelation because John was told to write about three things, three things there. One is what you have seen. These are the things he saw then because they are the things he saw then. And then he was told to write also what is now. And what was immediate then were the seven churches in, in Asia Minor, which were the seven churches was right to. And I say those churches were representatives of the churches then, and also the churches which were to go, a long church history that we've had for the last 2,000 years. And then also he was told to write what will take place after. And these are the things which now are to take place after the three chapters of the book of Revelation. Remember we said in the course of our study of the end times that the church appears in the book of Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. The church appears 19 times. But then from chapter 4, in chapter 4 and chapter 5, we see in chapter 4, the voice comes from heaven and says come up hither and then John starts to see some sceneries of heaven and then you remember we concluded then that in chapter 4 and chapter 5 already John is in heaven symbolizing typical of the raptured church which will not be on earth and then if from chapter 6 we found that from chapter 6 up to chapter 19 the church does not appear anywhere on earth and we concluded, therefore, at the time of the events of Revelation, chapter 9 to, to chapter 6 to chapter 19, there is no church on earth. What is happening? The church has already been raptured. And what is happening on earth? It is the time of the seven years of tribulation. And, we've been, and we started to look at the seven years of tribulation. We started with Revelation chapter 6, and we saw the seals being opened, and we looked at some of them. We've looked at the first one and the second one and the third one. And today now, we are in chapter 7. Just to remind you again, in ch from chapter 6 to chapter 19, 
the church is not appearing on earth because the church has been raptured and in the last three sessions we looked at what is happening to the church in heaven and we saw in 2 Corinthians 5.10 the church is appearing in the judgment seat of Christ for each person to be paid according to what he did in the board whether good or bad so we saw that the church is appearing before the Bema seat of Christ in heaven in the book of in, in between chapter 4 and chapter 5 now in chapter 7 now we see something different from chapter 6 there starts the period of judgment but then we see something different in chapter 7 and this is where we see the one for 4,000 and these are the people these are the personalities and this is the area now we'll be looking from today and then as we continue I would like to invite your questions if you have questions please write as we continue uh, previously we've tried to answer the questions you've written we'll still be willing to do so and now I want us now to look into the 144,000 this is a very exciting subject just as it has been with all the other parts of prophecy which involves personalities and characters in prophecy there has always come allusions or claims of people saying they are this group of people for example you've had somebody claim his the two witnesses in the book of revelation chapter 11 we've also had people claiming that they are the one for four thousand they are churches which are cultic which have taught that they have that heaven will only accommodate one hundred and forty four thousand they've gone further to claim their church is the one for four thousand we shall be looking into this and we shall get the truth and our truth will get from the scripture there is no need to speculate well in, enough truth is provided in the bible on this matter so we shall see that even those people who've claimed that they are part of the one for four thousand that is not the truth of the scripture because this is an event that shall come in the future now let's look at the scripture now so revelation chapter 7 verse 4 is telling us about this one for four thousand have been selected from the 12 tribes of israel so outrightly you can rule out any claim of people from any part of the world who have claimed that they are the one for four thousand because they are not jews we know there are churches who claimed that there are people who've claimed that i listened and i heard one of the preachers saying that he attended one of the big seminars somewhere and of course the preacher was speaking about end times and teaching about the one for four thousand as we shall see about the one for four thousand they were virgins and we shall explore what the bible means by they were virgins so when he was teaching about the one for four thousand one of the pastors who was there when they went for break he gathered people and he started to tell them that I used to be one of those one for four thousand and fortunately I married so we shall look and see whether individuals from the parts of the world could have been one for four thousand but whoever has claimed that it's a lie because this is something to happen in future and this will shall look at who, who, who these people will be so let's start from uh, the basics and we'll walk slowly together so that we can enhance understanding i would feel important first to look at these 12 because 12 numbers are very important in the scripture and uh, briefly we can try to look at uh, why 12 every time the bible speaks about 12 we see they've been selected from the 12 tribes of israel so that is one if you look into the bible 12 the number 12 is very significant for example in the jewish high priest he used to wear a breastplate with 12 stones they had their meanings but they were 12. the table of the showbread had 12 holy loaves of bread that table of the showbread in the holy places and they used to have 12 of them so that was significant representing also the 12 tribes when we get to jerusalem there were 12 gates into the city of jerusalem 12 gates so this 12 is very important in the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 28 we see 12 apostles will sit on the 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel so 12 is a significant number 
and maybe you could get that assignment to go and research why 12 of course one of the reasons is a number for government it has other symbolisms but is number 12 is very significant especially when we're looking into the nation of Israel so they were they were from number one they were from the 12 tribes of Israel so anybody purporting to claim that is one of the one for four thousand any church or any movement or any personality from this description from this truth uh, from in the uh, in, in the beginning we can rule them out and we can see those people are false prophets now number two they are sealed on the foreheads when you read chapter 7 verse 2 and 3 chapter 7 where we've read verse 2 and 3 says then I saw another angel coming up from the east having a seal of the living God having a seal of the living God he called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea verse 3 do not harm the land or the sea all the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of God so number two the first thing we've established they've come from the 12 tribes of Israel then number two they were sealed on their foreheads they had seals on their foreheads on the same it is confirmed in Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 confirms the same Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 it confirms the same about this one for 4,000 it says then I looked and there before me was the lamb standing on Mount Zion and with him one for 4,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads so we are seeing again the scripture confirmed because scripture confirms scripture and scripture interprets scripture and especially in, in these matters which people create unnecessary controversy it is good to allow scripture to confirm scripture so we can see in this case the lamb they were put a seal on their foreheads which had the name of the son which was jesus christ and also the father written on their foreheads so these are confirmations about these people have been sealed on their foreheads remember this is happening in the context of the seven years tribulation and remember also we see the tribulation is divided into two the first half is three and a half years which is called the tribulation and the second half is three and a half years which is called the great tribulation most likely if you study closely to this scripture you will find this event or this activity about this one for four thousand is happening after three and a half years that is the time when it is happening it is a significant time in the Jewish land in Israel because during the seven years the end part of the seven years the three and a half years partly the end of the three and a half years of the second phase there will be great revival national revival in the nation of Israel this far as we talk the promise of revival for the Jewish people has never been fulfilled the salvation of the Jewish nation in terms of accepting Christ Jesus has not been fulfilled in our day so there will come a time of national awakening in the nation of Israel and that will be the last part of the last of the first two or three and a half years during the time of tribulation so this period that we are reading about about the one for four thousand in revelation chapter seven is a period after the three and a half years of tribulation so we've confirmed these men have come from the 12 tribes of israel and then number two we are saying they have been sealed on their foreheads and we shall see why are these people sealed but remember it is the time in the reign of the antichrist and the time of the regime and reign of the false prophet and what is happening at that time the Christians are killed there are a lot of martyrs people sh are killed because of their faith in Christ but they are still getting saved so we look at more of what this man will be doing but I feel important to look at the issue of the seal 
because it's good to have an understanding. I still invite you to write your questions there, please. You can write your questions there. Welcome. They make this program exciting and a bit interactive. So please, you can you can put down your question. If you are still together, please say a name and there. Please say a name and there. Say a name and there. Please uh, say an amen there so that I can see that we are moving on together. We are talking about the 144,000. We are talking about the 144,000. Now, I feel it important we look at this issue of the seal, uh, of course, from the biblical point of view. Why is it important? Remember, during this time of the Antichrist, the Antichrist will be putting people the, his seal in Revelation chapter 13 the seal of 666 six, 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 the number of the beast so that will be a seal but again we see god is sealing his servants here so that they will not be destroyed during this time of tribulation so let's get more uh, slightly deeper about the seal uh, in the scripture because there's so much about seals in the scripture so these men are sealed in the forehead it's so clear from the bible they are sealed on the forehead and the name of the lamb and the name of the father is born in that seal what is a seal it was a tool or a, or a ring or a signet that stamped an owner's mark of identification on something so if an owner who owned something would like to put a permanent mark of ownership or a mark of identification he could use a seal. So that is one of the importances of the seal. It is stamped by the owner to mark identification that this I can identify. This is mine. And then it signifies security and authority. And we shall look at several cases in the Bible about seal. It's a very interesting thing and I feel to share with you about this. It is very, very important. For example, when you look at some cases in the Bible, in Daniel, for example, chapter 6, verse 17, when Daniel was thrown into the den of lions, the king's seal was placed on the stone at the entrance of the den to secure Daniel so that he could not get out of the prison. So the seal, the king's seal was placed there so that there's nobody who could open that prison. He was supposed to remain there. Nobody could open because the king has sealed. Now, something related to that. That time it was Daniel in the lion's den. But also, in the book of Matthew 27, verse 66, when you shall read, Daniel, sorry, Matthew 27, 66, you shall note also, the stone that was supposed to secure Jesus' tomb was sealed. It was sealed so that nobody could open the tomb so when the king would seal something it meant permanently it's secured there's no tampering nobody can be able to get anything out of it if you look into first kings chapter 21 verse 8 first kings 21 8 jezebel wrote letters in her husband's ahab in her husband ahab's name and sealed them with a seal giving them royal authority so when jezebel the wife of ahab wanted to give the letters she wrote some royal authority as she, she dispatched them she signed against them the name of her husband ahab so that they everybody who handled the letter could find there is royal authority in this parcel or in this letter and then you remember also the story of Esther, Esther 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 8. He used the king's seal in her correspondence to the Jews to protect them from Haman. You remember when the story changed, Haman wanted to, the Jews to be killed, but instead he was killed, and then there was change. And when the change came, Esther had to disperse letters to the Jewish people. And what she did, she took the king's seal and she signed the correspondences to mark authority, to mark royal authority, to mark their secure. Nobody should tamper with them. 
So these are part of the biblical examples which you even can borrow today from our contemporary world. But then, in our day, the seal which is very important in our day today is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Remember we are talking about the seal on the forehead of the one for 4,000 servants of God, witnesses. But of course we are borrowing, as I said, it's good to allow scripture to interpret scripture for understanding. And therefore the most important now seal in our day, and the day I'm calling our day, is what is called the church age, which is started in 2,000 years ago. In that, in that 3 AD, when Jesus Christ ascended, and then the apostles and the rest gathered, and in the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came 9 a.m. in the morning. The church was launched. And in 33 A.D., in the Passover of April, we shall be celebrating exactly 2,000 years since Jesus ascended. A very significant time that we are living. And therefore, when Jesus was ascending, he did something. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. The scripture says, and it shows us there, the believers have been sealed. When you read from the scripture, you'll find that the Holy Spirit has given us a seal. He has sealed us. He has put a seal on us, the Holy Spirit himself. If you read into that scripture, the Bible says we have been sealed with a seal of the Holy Spirit. So that is what is very, very important for our times. That is what is very, very critical for our day. That we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, what is this seal when you read in the book of Ephesians 1.13? The Bible says when we received Christ, we were sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit as a, as a deposit to guarantee our inheritance. So it's a security of some nature. One, in that scripture we see a security. We have been secured. When Jesus bought us, he placed a deposit to show and to say that which I have bought, I want to place a deposit so that it can be known it belongs to me. So we belong to Jesus, not only we belong to Jesus because he has bought us, he has redeemed us. We belong to him. And for that surety, he placed a deposit. And he said the deposit is the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to speak about something here about the Holy Spirit. And uh, I think uh, the, the Pentecostal people, I am a Pentecostal people, there is a gospel we used to preach and we need to have the full understanding of the doctrine of pneumatology about the Holy Spirit. We need to understand. Those days I remember when we got saved, there's a scripture in the book of Romans chapter 8, I can't recall the verse which says, and whoever does not have the spirit of God is not a son of God. So that scripture used to be used to condemn people who never used to speak in tongues. Because supposedly the interpretation from that point of view was, you only have the Holy Spirit when you can talk in tongues. That is even today how many, I mean, that's today still, it's still held widely today. But I just, before you challenge this, just look to your doctrine, kindling the scripture about the teachings of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to see the subject of the Holy Spirit is taught widely in the Bible. And this is it. When you look into the Bible, it's good to understand that to every body who is born again everybody who has been called the son of god has the holy spirit in this sense the scripture says there is no one who can say jesus is lord except by the holy spirit first corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 no one can say jesus is lord except by the holy spirit remember also in the teachings of jesus he said one of the things the Holy Spirit will do when he come, he'll convict the world. So the Holy Spirit does his initial work to somebody's heart by conviction. Even before you give your life to Jesus. As a matter of fact, no one can be born again 
without the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is why even when we are looking at the issue of tribulation, many people ask and they say, will the Holy Spirit be there? And remember I answered that question. I said, the Holy Spirit is fully available now in the church age, which has been there the last 2,000 years. But what will happen during the time of the tribulation, it will not be as much as now. Because even in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was there. But the Holy Spirit was not as He is in the church age. And that will apply the same during the time of the tribulation. But the Holy Spirit will be there. Why? During the time of tribulation, people will get saved. And listen to me, brother and sister. And listen everybody who can listen and hear. There is nobody, and this is the scriptural teaching, there is nobody who can be born again without the Holy Spirit. Why? Jesus told Nicodemus, unless you are born from above, Unless you are born of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So the initial work of the Holy Spirit to somebody is conviction. He has to convict you. And that is why when we are praying for people to be saved, one of the ways to pray for them is the Holy Spirit to have room in them to convict them about their sins. And therefore they can see the righteousness of God. So the initial work of the Holy Spirit is conviction. Then when somebody believes in Christ, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, you are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. So the second work of the Holy Spirit is to put a seal. We are, you are sealed when you receive Jesus Christ. And to that extent you have the Holy Spirit. But then it doesn't stop there. Jesus told people, the disciples who had believed in him, who had the mark of Christ in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he told, do not leave Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. And now that is what he also said. John used to baptize you with water. But in a little while, you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that is the third thing about the Holy Spirit. Those people who are not born again need the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And when they get saved, they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And those who are born again and sealed with the Holy Spirit... They need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and verse 8. They need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. The only sign of baptism in the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. That is very important. This teaching about Holy Spirit is important. So those people who have been born again, they have the mark and they have the seal of the Holy Spirit. They need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost to receive power to witness. And then chapter 2 verse 1 to 4, they speak in tongues as a sign that they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't end there because again this is the challenge of many Pentecostal people. They think the journey ends there and they brag, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit 10 years ago, 30 years ago. I speak in tongues so that when you get to prayer somebody bumbles out some tongues. It doesn't end there. You'll find the same disciples when they got baptized in the Holy Spirit and they went to preach and there was persecution. The Bible says in chapter 4 they gathered and they prayed together. And when they prayed the place they were praying was shaken. And when it was shaken the Bible says and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So after the baptism of the Holy Spirit there is the infilling of the Holy Spirit which is a daily requirement. Every minute. Every believer should be baptized, should be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what is very important is the infilling of the Holy Spirit because you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues and from there you don't consider and you are not keen about working out your life accordingly so that you walk in the presence of God. Let me go back now to the ceiling. Every born again child of God has been sealed with the Holy Spirit. So when we are looking about sealing, we are talking about being sealed as children of God. It is very important. Spiritually, all the children of God are known. Demons know you if you are born again. Angels of darkness know you. Angels of light know you. Angels of God know you. Why? Because you have been sealed. In the realm of the spirit, you are recognized, you are distinct. Let no any Christian think you are ordinary. 
Let no any Christian think you are like anybody else. Let no any Christian supposedly say what I have heard people say in a very silly manner, saying that I think those people who are not born again are even better than those who are born again. Even some people have said, I don't think there is a difference. It's because you can see things from a kind of point of view. But let me tell you, there's a whole difference between somebody who is born again and somebody who is not born again. Somebody who is born again has the mark has the seal of the spirit somebody who is not born again does not have the mark of the spirit and he or she is not a child of god that is very important so the seal will be put on the foreheads of these uh, men, uh, ministers of the uh, of that time and the one fought four thousand why will they have the mark we shall see to save them from destruction because as we know about the seven years, the tribulation period, there will be killings and there will be martyrdom and those who believe in Jesus will be destroyed. It will be very hard for anybody to stand strong to preach to the whole world. But because of the mission of this one for 4,000, they shall be sealed and this seal will protect them will give them security against the works of darkness will secure them from the powers of the antichrist they will not be wounded they will not be hurt they will be not martyred they will not be prisoned they will not be stoned they will move with a seal which even the devil will recognize and will put the devil at bay so this will be the security of the one for four thousand now what else we've looked at the seal they'll have the seal what else about these people the scripture says they are servants of the living god so these are people you know some people have said number one for is symbolic but it's so clear if they are servants of god then as the scripture shows us from the 12 tribes and then again the bible says there is a servants of the living god then these are people so we need to remove doubts of whether this will be men or this number is symbolic this number is so specific but remember again we want to correct the error where people have said these are the only people who will be in the heaven this part of scripture is not talking about heaven this scripture is telling us they are servants of god who've been assigned a mandate they have a mission on earth during the last three and a half years of tribulation so this mission is not in heaven this mission is not in the spirit supposedly where we cannot see and think it is symbolic these are men these are physical people these are human beings but then empowered to by god for a mission in the end times to preach in the whole world so they are servants of god they will be serving god highly empowered and jude with power one thing also i would like to you to understand going by scripture is these men as powerful as they will be and secured as they will be you know many christians today always long when we talk about one for four thousand when we talk about the two witnesses when we talk about the apostles when we talk about jesus many many christians long and they say i wish jesus was here i would go and sit under his feet i would ask him questions i would look at him healing and raising the dead I look at him rebuking demons so they long for that let me tell you you have it now Jesus said it's expedient for me to go for if I don't go your helper the Paracletos the one who walks along with you will not come so it is good I go so Jesus found it expedient he said you'll be more advantaged when I go so whatever you long that would have received during the time of Jesus. Whatever you long that you could have got when Jesus was there physically. Whatever you long that would have attended in a crusade where Jesus was healing. Whatever you desire to see that would have seen in the, in the, where Jesus was raising Lazarus. Whatever you long in Mark chapter 5 you'd have wished Jesus, to see Jesus cast out the demons from legion which went to the pigs all those things you desire jesus said greater things these things shall you do and even greater things than this you have the opportunity to do those things other people long and say i wish then i was there during the days of paul but let me tell you something paul laid a foundation and we are building on it therefore what he had you have it 
more advantage you have the Bible Paul didn't have it. The Holy Spirit used him to write the epistles. He wrote to you, now you have a lot of light, if I would go by that. There is nothing you long for the times of the apostles. It is available within you. Now let's go now to the book of Revelation. Most people long and wish and say, I wish I, I would see the one for 4,000. This Jewish man preaching powerfully in the world, doing crusades and massive people people responding to the gospel and mercy anointed man but let me tell you something this one for 4,000 as well as the 11 prophets and the, the two witnesses sorry the two witnesses all these people they use or they are endured or they are graced with one thing which you have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit I wish you knew that. I wish you understand that what is there kept for those men is available today. What the two witnesses will be using, the power of God is the Holy Spirit, is available today. These are the times the Bible says in First Peter, even the prophets desired to see. They longed to see about the salvation they talked about and the, the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. I just want to remind you that Jesus Christ, so the prophets longed to see the glories that will follow the suffering of Christ. The suffering of Christ happened 2,000 years ago. And there were glories to follow. They longed to see them. Those glories are available. Those glories are there for you. So don't start longing that you wish you saw the one for 4,000. And that's why people go further and say, we are part of the one for 4,000. That's why somebody would go further and say, um, the two witnesses, you don't need to be called the one for four. You don't need to be among them. You don't need to be the two witnesses. The power that these men will be using, let me give you good news. That power is available for you. This is the dispensation of the church. There is no other dispensation in the calendar of God which is graced than the dispensation of the church. It is called the bride of Christ. This one fought for and the two witnesses are not called so. The best time ever in the history of the world and in the time to come and the time past the best time the prophets decide to see, the best time the patriarchs decide to see, and I'm sure even during the tribulation, the best time even the one for 4,000 will decide to see. I am sure also the best time the 12, the two witnesses will long to see is the time called the church age. And that time is now. That time is now. The Holy Spirit is available. The Holy Spirit is there. The Lord can endure you. You can seek the Lord. You can move in power. You can raise the dead. Those men will be raising the dead. They will be healing the cripples. They will be prophesying. It is available today. The Spirit of God is there. You can prophesy. You can raise the dead. You can rebuke demons. You can preach and people can get saved. Of course, this will be a unique people in a way. But I'm saying, we don't sit there and wish we were there. We have it now. The Holy Spirit is there. And you can, as those men will be preaching, you can preach today. As they will be prophesying, you can prophesy today. You don't need to wish and call yourself the two prophets. You don't need to brand yourself anything. You just need to understand the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit is working miracles. The Holy Spirit is releasing prophecy. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wonders. Supernatural things are happening today. Don't look necessarily to then. I want you to focus on now. And the Holy Spirit is doing it. We shall continue next Tuesday to go further about this one for 4,000. But before we get there, I want to remind you that what will come then in terms of power it is available today. The supernatural of then, this is the best time. Everybody longs to be in the church age. I invite you, walk with God. 
it's available. The Holy Spirit is there. He is doing it again, even in our times. The Lord bless you so much. For this, I would like to give you several assignments. Assignment number one, please share. Please share this video with at least two people. Let them hear the word of God. I would like to invite your questions. Even when you go home and you have a question, please write it. We shall answer it. We shall give it time next Tuesday. Then I would like to remind you this Friday, our prayers are not in the morning. We are used to doing our prayers at 5. We've changed the program. Next Friday, we shall have our one hour Holy Ghost night. A Holy Ghost hour from 9.30 to 10.30. Holy Ghost hour. The Holy Spirit we are talking about, He is doing it today. The Holy Spirit we are talking about, who will be working then? Power free through two witnesses through the one fought for the Holy Spirit is here today and on that Friday prepare now the whole of Friday the day of Friday we shall be praying and fasting organize yourself even if you've never fasted receive the grace to fast you'll abstain from meals you will prepare and then in the evening 9 30 to 10 30 we shall wait for the Holy Ghost to minister to us in our houses, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That Jesus will be doing it with the two witnesses and the one for 4,000. That Jesus is the same we are serving today. It's the same Holy Ghost we have. And we are ready for that experience on Friday. Don't miss it out. Invite, invite your friends. Please inform them. And let's prepare. I invite you to giving, give your tithe, the tail number is there, the bank account is there, give your tithe, give your offerings, give your sacrificial giving and faith giving, you are most welcome. Until we meet on Friday night, the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Bye and enjoy your night. Thank you so much.